That's it. That's it. Go! From the first day of practice, a young man learns winning does not come easy. He learns that courage and determination and hard work pave the road to success. Hi, I'm Vince Dooley, head coach of the University of Georgia and president of the American Football Coaches Association. Each year we see thousands of college football players striving to be the best. A select few of them possess the ability to rise above the rest, both on the field and in the classroom. These special young men have been selected by the coaches as the finest college football players in America, the 1985 All-American football team. If one phase of the game shaped the image of college football 1985, it was the passing attack. Hefty mobile blockers, skilled rifle arm quarterbacks, fearless lightning quick receivers, and college teams were throwing more and scoring more than at any time in the 117 year history of the sport. At Tennessee, senior wide receiver Tim McGee has caught more passes for more yards in his career than any player in volunteer history. Coach Johnny Majors of the Southeast Conference Champions called McGee the best receiver ever at Tennessee. His uncanny ability to get open has earned him Tennessee's all-time single season reception record and made Tim McGee the coach's choice as an All-American wide receiver. If the fans who enjoy their Saturday afternoons at football games would look up the word consistency in a dictionary, they might find a picture of David Williams. This Illinois senior has caught more passes than any receiver in Big Ten history and is ranked second in career catches among all the NCAA receivers who ever played the game. A two-time Kodak All-American, David Williams has consistently proved he's among the best ever at catching a football. At tight end, the coaches selected six foot two inch Willie Smith of Miami. Only a junior, Smith has so dominated enemy secondaries that he already holds Miami records for most catches in a game, most catches in a season, and most catches in a career. And that's with one more year to play. Smith joins Williams and McGee as All-American receivers. And with today's emphasis on throwing, each is the top pass catcher in his school's history. Some quarterbacks may have thrown more. Some may have completed more. But few have won more this year than Iowa's Chuck Long. When Long returned to Iowa, as a fifth-year senior, he had one goal in mind, the Rose Bowl. That dream was realized as Long set Big Ten records for both career and season touchdown passes and became the first Big Ten quarterback to throw for more than 10,000 career yards. A finance major, Long is a leader who says reading defenses is the most important part of his job. As Iowa claimed its first outright Big Ten championship in 27 years, the long journey to the top was complete. Thanks to All-American quarterback, Chuck Long. Chuck, stay down! Down from the back better! The Not skills that produce All-American offensive linemen are refined here on the practice field. I wouldn't even step up. Step flat, not back, flat, all right? 
In other words, I'd be right here enough. Yeah. It's a fresh air classroom, and the instructors are determined their students get it right. You got me? Keep those shoulders. Five who learned their lessons well are now honored by the coaches as the top offensive linemen of 1985. At center is Georgia senior Peter Anderson, number 64. According to coach Vince Dooley, Anderson, who opens this hole for a touchdown run, played better through an entire season than any offensive lineman he's ever coached at Georgia. The tradition of outstanding offensive linemen at Southern Cal continues with a six foot, four inch mountain named Jeff Briegel. This 280 pound junior is the sixth Trojan since 1978 to be selected by the coaches as an all American blocker and one of the most dominant offensive linemen ever to wear the Cardinal and gold. A football heritage has been revitalized in upstate New York, where a switch to the wishbone offense put Army among the most devastating running teams in America. Senior guard Don Smith, a Dean's List student every semester since his arrival at West Point, has built his football ability upon the pride and discipline gained at the academy. The pride you learn here and the discipline you learn here carries over into your football endeavors. And in turn, what you learn on the football field carries over into what, to, what you do in the classroom and what you do militarily. Now, there's, there's no one thing that influences directly the other. I think they both complement each other and uh, in doing so make me a stronger person all, all the way around. They call the offensive line at Maryland the Beef Brothers. And the biggest and best is 303-pound, 6'5", J.D. Marleveld. Leading the Terps to their third straight ACC championship, Marleveld had to not only fight off defensive linemen, but also the effects of a cancer tumor removed from his chest. An inner determination to succeed in spite of that severe setback has carried J.D. Marleveld to the top in college football. Virginia senior Jim Dombrowski is a biology major who would like someday to become an orthopedic surgeon. Whether firing off the line or pulling to escort a runner upfield, Jim Dombrowski, a man who loves to block, rounds out the coach's All-American offensive line. The punter on this year's team is Auburn's Lewis Colbert, who has learned the concept of team first is the key to a successful kicking game. You have to be uh, unselfish to be a punter because uh, anyone could go out there and kick the ball in the end zone. Um, you have to have a lot of self-discipline to uh, give up the extra five, ten yards, whatever it is, to kick a coffin corner. I take pride in kicking coffin corners because I get more satisfaction. I feel like I've helped the team more than just you know going out there and kicking the ball uh, straight away and sailing into the end zone. All of the players you're watching in this film have been studied many times by many coaches. Let me show you how we do it. Okay, let's take a look at a slide pro. Each coach spends hundreds Sweet of hours game. analyzing Sliding future game. opponents and grading his own players. We look at them again and again, and by the time we've evaluated thousands of miles of film, we have a pretty good idea of which players are deserving of All-American recognition. Quarterback, Drex. Action back towards the lead halfback. Selected by the coaches, these are truly the finest college football players in America. Not only one of the finest college football players in America, but one of the finest college students in America is Syracuse defensive tackle 
Tim Green, a National Football Foundation scholar-athlete, a Rhodes Scholar candidate, and a senior with a major in English literature. Green's reading habits are varied and somewhat unusual. Well, I tend to uh, go towards the epics. I like um, Virgil and Homer, Milton. Um, but if I'm just going to sit down and, and read something, I'll usually pick up a Hemingway. Or if I really want to get low budget, I'll pick up a Robert Ludlum. <laughs> On Saturdays, his style is to pick up the man with the ball, whether it's a quarterback or a tailback. Leading the Orangemen to their finest season in more than 15 years and into their first bowl game in six years, Tim Green's achievements both on and off the field have made him the epitome of today's student-athlete and a proud choice for the coaches' All-America defensive line. At Michigan, number 66 is the Hammer, senior Mike Hammerstein, leader of a Wolverine defense that allowed less than a touchdown a game. A menacing force, Hammerstein's quickness found him in enemy backfields often before anyone knew he was coming. Oklahoma State has just completed the three winningest years in school history, and Coach Pat Jones knows a major reason why. Leslie O'Neill obviously is one of the premier defensive linemen in America and has been for the last couple of years. He's a young man that has got tremendous foot speed. Uh, he's, he's a great pass rusher. He's a big play man. The thing about Leslie O'Neill that is so impressive is he shows up in so many ways uh, with sacks against the run. Uh, he blocks kicks. Leslie O'Neill can beat a football team and can dominate a football game in a, in a number of different ways. For the 17th consecutive year, Nebraska has won nine or more games. And players like Jim Scow, number 96, perpetuate that astounding success. Scow owns the school record for tackles behind the line was named weightlifter of the year by his teammates and is one of the top defensive linemen in college football. At Boston College, the Eagle has landed right in the middle of enemy backfields. The Eagle, with the python-like arms, is Mike Ruth, who can bench press 580 pounds and who teammates call the Sultan of Sack. But the most unique quality about this rugged senior is that he is a theology major and his biggest goal is to become a Catholic priest. Mike Ruth may not be the biggest, but he's among the strongest members of the All-American defensive line. The coaches selected two linebackers, one from Oklahoma, sophomore Brian Bosworth, number 44. Bosworth possesses the perfect credentials for a linebacker, the strength to take on a blocker head-to-head, -head, then make the tackle, and the speed to follow the flow and dive at the ball carrier. A defensive standout in Oklahoma's Orange Bowl clinching win over Nebraska, Brian Bosworth, All-American linebacker. For four consecutive years, Larry Station has led the Iowa Hawkeyes in tackling. Right before the snap of the ball, I'm thinking about, you know, the running back getting a good hit on him. Then I'm thinking about, you know, the down and distance situation. And then once the ball is snapped, I just react on the running back's moves. Then I just go to the ball. 
Going to the ball has made station number 36, Iowa's all-time leading tackler. Off the field, he has achieved academic honors as a computer science major. But best of all, Station co-captained an Iowa team that finished a 10-victory regular season for the first time in school history. Larry Station, a repeat Kodak All-American linebacker. Down linemen, linebackers, and now the secondary all share one common desire, to keep football a contact sport. One of the best is Arizona State's David Fulcher. When a defensive player gets a sack or an interception or a hard hit, it kind of just ignites everybody as well as the crowd. You know, it just kind of makes you feel good. And when I'm out there on defense, I just, hey, whatever the action is, I just go out and play and go at it. At 6'3", 224 pounds, Fulcher is the nation's largest free safety who roams the secondary with reckless enthusiasm and numbers few runners among his personal friends. Joining Fulcher in the All-America defensive backfield is an Air Force General's dream. Senior Scott Thomas, number 29, led the Falcons to victories over both Army and Navy, giving Fisher DeBerry's team the coveted Commander-in-Chief's trophy and the winningest season in Air Force Academy history. The captain of Bo Schembechler's relentless Michigan defense, number 30, Brad Cochran. So overpowering was this crew, they surrendered only five touchdowns all season, winning the Wolverines and Brad Cochran a trip to the Fiesta Bowl. He's only 5'9", but his coach, Grant Taft calls him the best defensive back he's ever coached at Baylor. His name is Thomas Everett, and after switching from running back to the secondary, he has buried opponents with his aggressive tackling. Once again, the coaches All-American secondary, David Fulcher of Arizona State, Scott Thomas of Air Force, Brad Cochran of Michigan, and Baylor's Thomas Everett. This right foot has kicked more field goals than any in the history of college football. It belongs to UCLA's John Lee, who played Little League Baseball growing up in Seoul, Korea, and had not touched a football until his family moved to California. His 79 career field goals are the most ever, and his theory on kicking is excellent form makes great consistency. John Lee has become the most accurate kicker in NCAA history, and a unanimous choice as the coach's All-America place kicker. Over the years, the color and pageantry of college football has become as much a part of the game as the passing and running. In 1985, the fanatic followers of the sport cheered a great many exciting, long-distance runners. One of them is number 34, a burst of speed from Michigan State named Lorenzo White. It is rare for a sophomore runner to be selected by the coaches, but so astonishing were his accomplishments in both good weather and bad that he could not be overlooked. White led all of college football in yards gained running, topped Herschel Walker's sophomore NCAA rushing record, and became the all-time single-season rushing leader in the Big Ten. 
with four games over 200 yards. Lorenzo White established himself as the most prolific sophomore runner in college football history and would not be denied a berth in the All-American backfield. At Auburn, the offense became what they called the die eye. And Saturdays became more than ever the Bow Show. At the Auburn 48, to the left of Pitt to Bow Jackson, sweeping left. He's hit in the backfield, struck off a tackle, runs a tackle, 45 20, 25 30, 25 20. Bow's got one man to beat. He dodges him at the 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Auburn! And Bo Jackson right there, Jim. What a great run, Bo Jackson. 53 yards. Middleton. Lines up on the left wing. Here is the pitch to Bo Jackson. Tries to sweep outside. Bo goes it away at the 30, 25, the 20. The 10. He's at the 5, fighting off the tackler and going in. Touchdown, Auburn! Bo Jackson up 35 yards first for his second long gain and touchdown of the day. Auburn's Vincent Bo Jackson, a 400 hitter in baseball and holder of virtually every War Eagle rushing record, is also a very private person. A young man who normally performs in front of thousands, but who likes to escape the spotlight and relax alone. I like to get out in the woods. I necessarily don't have to be hunting or fishing, just to get out there and sit, clear up my mind and erase all, all um, thoughts that on my mind that's causing stress or problems, just to get out and be with nature. A family and child development major, Bo Jackson spends a lot of time with kids, but his skills wearing number 34 have gained him national acclaim and gained Auburn a berth in the 1986 Cotton Bowl Classic. Senior Bo Jackson, Join sophomore Lorenzo White, two exceptional runners, topping off the coaches' 1985 All-America football team. Those are some of the finest runners we've seen in college football in a long time. Each one worthy of the All-American selection. Now let's review this year's team. First, the defense. And the offense. Each young man can take pride in his selection by the coaches as the finest in college football. Each player is truly an All-American. coming in. Tim Green, what does it mean to you being chosen to the 1985 Kodak All-America football team? I think like any kid growing up in America that's a football player, you dream of being a college football American. And uh, certainly the Kodak football American team is, is probably the most prestigious. Uh, you know, because not only because it's involved with Kodak, but um, because it's selected by coaches around the country. Uh, so, you know, it's it's just a great honor, and uh, it's it's one of the things that I've always dreamed of, and and always hoped just to be sitting here, you know, wearing the <laughs> Kodak insignia and everything. Uh, it's just great. It's really exciting. Tim, thank you very much. Thank you. For Eastman Kodak, this is Tony Hernandez. Hometown television interviews are just a part of the weekend. There are many quiet moments to meet and get to know special guests and other members of the squad. And an opportunity to sit for that much dreamed of Kodak portrait, the picture of achievement 
that shows the world you are one of the finest college football players in the country. Okay, now same thing. Just, just move everything just about. Yeah, that's good right there. Perfect. Here we go. Good. Together in uniform, these splendid athletes share the pride of their selection. For they shall now be shown as one, a team. With pictures and interviews, the schedule is full, but the All-Americans enjoy an opportunity to spend time with their peers and the children of Kodak customers who look upon these super-athletes as their heroes. Heroes not just to the young, but to a nation waiting to learn more about these Kodak All-Americans. Sports Look, the show that goes beyond the scores and headlines of the sports world. It is unquestionably the most intriguing story in college football this year, I think. It is the story of faith and the test of it. It's the story of the 1985 Outland Trophy winner, Mike Ruth, a brilliant nose guard for the Boston College Eagles. Mike is a man, to paraphrase Rich Riley of Sports Illustrated, a man who can quote Cicero, but who is built like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He can bench press 580 pounds, run a 4840. He's got a vertical leap of 32 inches. And oh yes, Mike is thinking of forsaking football for the priesthood, to give up pro football's millions for seminary school. Today, the choice, saving touchdowns or saving souls. Mike Ruth's unique story today on Sports Look. Cheers, Heisman Trophy winner is in town today. He's standing by live with our Gene Washington at the Century Plaza. Gino. Thanks a lot, Ted. And of course, the occasion is the Kodak All-American team. And Bo Jackson is standing here with me. And Bo is a, a two-year member of this team. He made it in his sophomore year and his senior year. Lorenzo, best of luck in the All-American Bowl against Georgia Tech also, okay? All right, thank you. Thanks for being with us. Lorenzo White, leading rusher in the nation. How about that? Right now, we're on the Santa Monica Freeway, and we're approximately one half hour away from the Disneyland area. We're gonna be this was no ordinary field trip, however, mainly because the 24 participants who spent the day at Disneyland were all members of the Kodak All-American team. Led by Heisman Trophy winner Bo Jackson and Outland Trophy recipient Mike Ruth, for all of them, the time they spent in the land of fantasy was a reward for a job well done. Yet even more rewarding for them was the opportunity to be with each other in a relaxed environment. During the year, we compete. And right now, we come together as uh, one and get to know each other and have a whole lot of fun. Fun on this weekend not only included the trip to Disneyland, but a tour of the popular Universal Studios both major businesses with close ties to Eastman Kodak. The culmination of this superb weekend was an awards banquet and movie which served as a tribute to these All-Americans. We'll start with the sometimes unsung heroes, the defensive team. First, the defensive linemen, the men who stand in those trenches. From Syracuse, Tim Green. Tim? Selected for Kodak by the American Football Coaches Association, each young man received his award in the spirit of the all-American tradition that has symbolized perfection for more than 100 years. From Michigan. Mike Hammerstein, Mike. He now joins an elite group of athletes who wear this badge of success with pride. From Oklahoma State, Leslie O'Neill. Leslie? <laughs> the banquet tonight is one of the high points of an exciting weekend. 
And yet the highlights of what these men have accomplished are too important and too exciting to be forgotten. We at Kodak think that these accomplishments are exactly the right subjects for a movie, and we have that movie here for you tonight. This is a premiere showing of the 1985 All-American Team Movie. Another highlight is the presentation of the Kodak AFCA All-American Achievement Award, given annually to a former member of the Kodak All-American team for outstanding professional and personal career accomplishments. The 1985 winner was Alex Kroll, Chief Operating Officer of Young and Rubicam Advertising Agency and a 1961 Kodak All-American at Rutgers University. Thank you, Bill, very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank all the good people of the Eastman Kodak Company, not only for this extraordinary honor, of which I'm so proud, but also for supporting this program for a quarter of a century. You have made some very special moments for a lot of young men and women, and you should be proud. Yes, the pride engendered through the accomplishments of these young men will not be forgotten nor will their weekend as special guests of Eastman Kodak. Whether meeting and getting to know corporate customers of Kodak at a formal banquet in their honor, or simply signing a name for a young fan, this weekend is a dream come true. Many hours of Kodak planning make it all happen successfully. A wonderful experience these players will savor for a lifetime. This is their reward for excellence. <laughs>